Welcome to Artistic Adventures. We're starting a new project, a Marie Antoinette doll. And of course, you know, I'll have to give you some history, but also we're going to focus on how to make panniers in this particular video. So let's get started on some history. First of all, Marie Antoinette was born in 1755. She was an Archduchess of Austria, and she was pledged in marriage to the Dauphin of France, who at the time that she married him was 15 and she was 14. And then when his father died from smallpox, he became the next king of France and she became the next queen of France. Now this topic particularly interests me because I have a book that deals with one of the painters who painted numerous portraits of Marie Antoinette, including this one. And that painter's name is Elizabeth Vigi Lebrun. And this painter was notoriously different because she was a female painter in a man's world during that time of uh, world history. And you'll see a lot of paintings of Marie Antoinette by her. So anyway, I have written this book that's sort of loosely based, um, it's fiction, of course, but it's sort of based on Vigi Lebrun's daughter and somewhat Vigi Lebrun. And of course, I have to work in some of the characters of the French Revolution, in court, uh, you know, including Marie Antoinette. So um, this character intrigues me. And when Sarah suggested it, I was like, you know what? Yeah, I really want to do that. So here's another painting of Marie by Vigi Lebrun. Uh, you'll, if you'll, if you see some of her paintings, they start to become very distinctive. And she painted numerous uh, members of the nobility across the world in, that, in those days, Russia, England, France, everywhere. This was a painting that she did of Marie in one of her s simple outfits that she liked to wear at her little place called the Petit Trianon, where she had a little farm there. And uh, it was sort of uh, caused a sensation back then because it was con considered really simple dress and uh, not really appropriate for a queen, but it was uh, what Marie Antoinette uh, sort of liked to do when she was at her little retreat and uh, do a little farming. Now, she did have four children uh, with her husband, but uh, they didn't come until eight years after they were married. There was some trouble with uh, the young prince wanting to consummate the marriage, but they finally did, and eventually uh, two died and two survived. Um, this is a picture of what Marie Antoinette would probably have looked like after her husband was killed. Uh, she was killed nine months after him, so for a while she wore black and was called the Widow Capet by the revolutionaries. And um, when she was finally taken to the guillotine, this is a drawing of what it was uh, presumed that she looked like from descriptions written about the day. She did wear white a simple white dress with a shawl and a white cap with a black ribbon on it. And uh, then after she was killed, uh, Madame Tussaud, who has the famous wax museum, actually did do a casting of her face. And that's the death mask of Marie Antoinette there on the right. And you can compare it with a picture painting of Marie Antoinette by Vigi Lebrun on the left. And uh, if you... Uh, don't know much about Madame Tussaud. She's also an interesting character. You could look her up. Uh, I did go to her museum when I was in London, and it was very interesting to see uh, celebrities and also historic figures, uh, such as this one, that were made from death masks that she made of people who had died back in the day. That was one of her jobs. So um, this, was, this was a wax figure that was in Madame Tussaud's of Marie Antoinette, made from her death mask. Of course, she looks a lot happier in this picture than she probably was at the time of her death. Very interesting character. Uh, when she died, she was 38. And uh, when you think about her, or when I do, I think of these elaborate court dresses that she wore. Uh, these were, you know, they had the wide panniers on, or uh, hoops underneath. They weren't like the round hoops during the Civil War uh, or the Old South that we think of, but they were wide on the sides and sort of flat on the front and back. So the dress that we're going to make is going to be a little bit similar to this. I, I can't drape like that with the material on a small character. But here's a bar, uh, silkstone Barbie that was actually done, a, a Marie Antoinette silkstone Barbie that I think was the costume was done very well and uh, symbolic of, of that period. 
So we're going to do something fairly similar, not completely like this, because like I said, the material is hard to work with at that at that size. So the first thing we got to do is make the panniers, and this is a full pannier with, uh, you'll see it has a drawstring string waist, um, and is gathered up at the top. And then it has these wooden hoops that will run through a casing in the fabric. We're going to do our own version of that uh, because that would be really hard to do on a 1-6 scale doll. This is another type of pannier. It was called a basket pannier. And it was just something that tied around the waist and, and uh, stuck out on the sides. It certainly wouldn't have been used for the elaborate court dresses that Marie Antoinette used. So the ones that we're going to attempt are going to be the full ones. But before we get started, I had to show you this adorable outfit that I got from my little mini petite Blythe. Uh, if you remember, I did the unboxing. But look at this little cute dress and the sweater. This is handmade and little tights. I really have no idea how this woman did this. This is, to me, it's amazing. It is so beautiful. And little tiny booties and that gorgeous cute little hat and you'll see I did cut her hair in a bob I couldn't take that long <laughs> red hair but anyway I found that shop on Etsy and uh, she does have other Blythe as well now this is the doll we're going to be using it's uh, one of the Draculaura dolls and uh, we're going to of course get rid of the hair get rid of that face and then I did have on hand this uh, beautiful periwinkle blue taffeta that I would like to use for the dress it's not very drapey but We'll see what we can do with it. I'm trying to use things that I have on hand instead of buying new things uh, because I have a lot of things on hand. So I have gotten rid of the hair and cleaned the face off with acetone. And to do this, I wanted to use this stand. This is a Silkstone Barbie stand and it's a little too tall, but I like it because I'll be able to work on the dress with the doll standing up. And so what I'm going to do to hold her onto it is just tape around her ankles and her thighs and that'll make her into sort of a dress stand that I can uh, assemble this dress on. I'm also going to be starting with the dress as opposed to the face up like I usually do because I think we're going to need to do that with um, this elaborate dress. So to start making the hoops I'm going to use pipe cleaners and uh, so the first one I'm going to make about that wide and then I'm going to make them gradually I'm going to make a total of three so I'm going to make them gradually um, larger as I go down. Now, if you notice, I uh, stopped the camera there. What happened was I turned that glass of water over that was setting, and everything got soaking wet. So the bad news is I turned the water over. The good news is my table is now completely clean. All right, so back to making hoops. So I've made that first one, and now I'm making the second one. And I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. And we are making them oval. Remember, not round. So they stick out on the sides. And then I'm going to connect two um, pipe cleaners together. Just twisting them together to make a little bit bigger one. And that will be the bottom hoop. So I'm going to work these out with my fingers and, you know, make sure that they're nice and oval. They certainly aren't as stable as wood would be if it if it was a real set of panniers, but um, given what we have to work with, I think I think we'll make this work. <laughs> also, I'm not going to use a drawstring at the top. What I'm going to do is um, use another pipe cleaner as the waistband, and uh, this will make it easy to take on and off, and I think probably give it a little bit more stability. So. Um, that's uh, that's really my idea at this point. Like you said, I've never done this before. You know, this is artistic adventures. So we're doing an adventure here. We're trying to figure out how to do panniers. Just, you know, coming up with something here. And hopefully it will work. All right, so I've got two side pieces connected to the waistband. And I'm going to put the doll's arms up in the air so this is easy to slide on and off. And then basically, I'm just going to start attaching these uh, pipe cleaner sides as they go down to the hoops. And I'll be spacing them out. I'll look at, you know, I'll look at them before I do it, but then space them out and try to make them so that the dress will, will drape over them properly. This is going to be a really challenging dress to make, I think, because, you know, it has to be somewhat elaborate, but... Um, and also with the way it's shaped, it's not 
going to be like a circle. You know, a lot of the uh, dresses that I've made, I just make a circle. This one actually is going to have to be uh, constructed to fall over the hoops on the sides so that it, it uh, you know, comes down appropriately at the bottom and is even all the way across. So this is going to be a challenge. I've never made anything like this, but I love a challenge. And we'll work on it together. What do you think? So just about got it all completed uh, in terms of putting down the basics here. And I am going to put another pipe cleaner down the front and the back just to add a little bit more stability to the undergarment. We are going to make her some undergarments, by the way. I mean, she has to have like some little pantaloons and, you know, the white sort of over the knee tights with some lace around them. Yeah, we'll, de we'll definitely be working on that later. But I want to get this part out of the way. So now what I'm going to do, and instead of trying to sew something to go over this, you know, I'm going to glue it. And wow, can you imagine 1700s if they'd had some E6000, what they could have made? <laughs> Uh, yes, madam, I shall glue your dress immediately. So right now I'm just putting some fray check on uh, this piece because the top part of it I'm going to fold over uh, after I complete the whole dress, but I don't want that top part to fray. So I'm going to put the glue, and, and I actually started using just the regular tacky glue, but it just takes so long to draw, and I, I just can't spend, you know, three days... <laughs> or two days or whatever gluing uh, to do a video. It's just too much time. So I did glue the top tier with with the uh, tacky glue and just basically situated that fabric so that it, it sits down on it with enough sticking up that I can turn down under the, wa the waist uh, band of the, uh, that, that has the little uh, pipe cleaner there. All right, so after it's somewhat dry, it's not completely dry, and after this I'm switching over to E6000, which dries a lot faster, but I'm just going to go ahead and trim off the excess, and then I'm just going to start gluing um, each layer down one at a time until I have the complete pannier covered. You just sort of have to keep working with those uh, pipe cleaners, the fabric is going to give it some, some stability too, so make sure that you have the pipe cleaners in the right position when you glue it down. So on this one I glued down the top part, then I went ahead and trimmed the bottom part and that will make it easier for me to glue underneath what I have um, glued down on the top. So after I have that, I'm just going to glue the side there and then fold it up a little bit and glue along on the bottom portion of that panel. And just press it down, make sure it's nice and straight. And you can go back, you know, at the, I did go back at the end and really, you know, trim up a lot of it, a lot of this so it didn't look ragged. You know, just so you get it nice and glued down. And then once it's dry, you can work on it a little bit more and manipulate it a little bit more without it falling apart. So same procedure, going to go around, put this piece down, and do a little trimming. And then I'll be able to glue that bottom portion down. Now the back is going to be just a little different because I do want to be able to take this on and off. So I'm going to make the top tier of the back open down to the pipe cleaner, the, the first row. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But I did want to be able to remove this because like I said, I do want to make her some little pantaloons and some stockings to go with her outfit. Oh, and shoes too. It wouldn't be you know, that period of France without some Louis heels, right? <laughs> All right, so we're ready to start the back. And like I said, I'm going to cut two pieces here so that I can remove, I can open up the back and remove it. So I'm making a piece that's a little bit bigger than I need. And then I'm cutting it in half, putting some of the fray check on it, because I'll be turning that under 
and I don't want it to fray. And then I want to match up the side and I'll just do one side at a time and then I'll also be turning the top part under at the waistband on this back part as well but on either side of where it twists together to attach. So I had that one a little bit bigger I had to trim it and I'll put some more fray check on it. All right and then I'm get, trying to get that out of the way so the fray check will go ahead and dry. It does take a few minutes for that to completely get dry. And then we'll go ahead and put the other side on. And then we can trim that up and do the same thing with that center portion, get that trimmed to where we want it to be. And then fold one over the top of the other and that'll make our opening. And then we'll just do the other two tiers exactly like we did on the front part, attaching the glue to the loop above, gluing that down, and then trimming, and then going under and gluing down the second tier. You know, I see a lot of doll videos, and a lot of times, you know, we're, we're all kind of doing similar things, but I don't know that I've ever seen anybody make panniers before. <laughs> maybe they have, and I just haven't seen it, but maybe this is a YouTube first. Doll panniers. All right, so we're ready to get started on that last row and then we're going to finish off the bottom this um, you can't really tell from this angle because it's the camera's kind of looking down on it but it's probably a good inch above her her uh, feet so it's a little bit short although it's not going to show I do want to kind of finish it off by putting some lace on it so once we get that bottom part down and trimmed. Then I'm going to use some of my surplus lace that I have on hand. And we'll just glue that around the bottom as well. I wonder if I doubt if Marie Antoinette had a glue dress. <laughs> that would have been kind of funny. Anyway, did they have glue back then? I don't even know. So I'm just going to start at the back because I want the seam, the opening seam to be at the back and just putting a little glue down and putting some pins in to hold it till it dries. And this will give it just a little bit more of that petticoat look so that it's finished along the edge. Since we're not hemming it per se, we're just going to cover everything up with glue and lace. And I think it actually looks pretty good that way. I don't think it's really that bad. So when you get around to the back, I overlap it just a little bit, glue it down, pin it, and then trim off the excess. All right, so there we go. So I'm going to take it off now, let it dry at that bottom part, and then I'm also going to turn over the excess at the waistband, put some glue on that and pin that down. So we've got a finished waistband and making sure I fold it over on either side of the back part where the opening is so I can take it on and off over her head. So it won't be a, a Velcro closure, it's going to be a just a, the pipe cleaner where you can twist it. And it's going to work okay because it, it's going to be under the dress and it's not going to show anyway. So um, I'm going to leave it like that. Alright, so you can see I have it with the opening uh, left so that I can get it over her head and the front part is pinned down. And we're going to let that set and dry for a minute. And then once it's dry, we can come back and take the pins out and try it on for size. All right, you can tell it's evening by now. I've changed over from a glass of water to a glass of wine because <laughs> this uh, video did take all day. <laughs> and, I, and I put it on the left side so I won't turn it over. All right, so um, got it on over her head and now we're just going to pull it tight and then twist the pipe cleaners together to hold it on. And I did um, go back and trim around some of the rougher edges where it, you know, where the fabric overlapped so it doesn't show so much because once it's into the glue, then it's, it's not going to come unraveled. So trim it down to where it's 
you know, next to the glue. And I had to straighten out some of the pipe cleaners a little bit because they got smooshed when I was pulling it over her head. Um, so I will show you now a still picture so you can get a little bit better look at it after I did all the trimming and, and everything. But I think it turned out pretty well. And I think it's going to be a nice foundation for the dress that we're going to make. So in the next video, I'm going to be working on the dress. And that, that's going to be an interesting challenge. Uh, from there, we'll move on to undergarments. And then we'll do face and wig last. A little bit backwards than the way I normally do it. But anyway, I think it's going to be a really interesting project. And I hope you have enjoyed this part of it. And enjoyed a little bit of the history and making some panniers. So stay tuned for more Marie Antoinette. And if you haven't, be sure and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thanks and bye.